today we're hosted by Amala. This is the first time they're sharing their program. So really excited. Moderating today is Polly, who is the co-executive director, who will introduce the session and introduce her colleagues. Over to you, Polly. Thank you so much, Lorraine. And it's a pleasure to be here at Migration Summit. This is the first time that Amala has, has participated as a panelist. And so we're so happy to be here with you all today. So um, I'm Polly. And as Lorraine said, I am the co-executive director of Amala Education. Um, and Amala was founded six years ago in response to the lack of high quality learning opportunities for refugee youth. Um, and we believe really strongly in the potential of young people to, um, to develop themselves, to change, to change their communities and to change the world. And we believe also very strongly in the power of education um, as a tool to make that happen through the development of agency. Um, so we aim to enable youth to access transformational learning experiences. We have a number of different programs that we run, um, also in collaboration with partners. Um, but the program that we're going to talk about today is our high school diploma program, which is specifically designed for youth who have dropped out of school. Um, and in and it enables youth to have a second chance to finish their secondary education um, and to improve their lives and communities. Um, the programme is 15 months long um, and covers the equivalent of the last two years of school. And if students fulfil our competency based requirements, um, uh, participation in the programme then results in the award of a high school diploma, the Amala High School Diploma. Um, we spent two years developing the program from scratch alongside over 150 educators and refugee youth. Um, it's a relatively new program. So we launched it for the first time in Amman, Jordan in 2020, and then in Kakuma Camp in Kenya in 2021. Um, so to date, 300 students have participated in the program and 100 students have graduated. Um, we're currently undergoing accreditation of the program um, with two accreditation agencies, um, the Council of International Schools, CIS, and NEASC, New England um, Association of Schools and Colleges, which is a US-based accreditor. Um, and so we are, we are, we're kind of in the pro in that process, but um, we are hoping that accreditation will be in place by early next year for the program, which will allow us to continue improving it um, and also expanding it um, and gaining further recognition. Um, I will not say much more right now because uh, we're going to talk all about the program in a minute. Um, we're going to be speaking about the program and the role that it can play um, as a pathway for refugee youth. Um, and I am absolutely delighted to be joined today by Majd and Sudi, who are two of our um, very first Amala High School Diploma alumni um, who studied the program in Kakuma and, uh, and Amman, respectively. So um, we have Majd. Majd, if you want to give a little wave. <laughs> um, so Majd is an alumnus of our, of our first high school diploma program cohort in Jordan. Um, he is currently studying for a double major in psychology and philosophy at Prince Edward Island University in Canada. Um, and he, as well as that, he is the founder of Scholarscope, um, an online platform which aims to be a LinkedIn to connect students and universities um, with scholarships. Um, and last year, um, Scholarscope actually won Jordan's Startup of the Year Award. Um, so yeah, an example of its continuing success. Um, and then we have Sudi, if you want to give a bit of a wave, Sudi. Um, so Sudi is an alumnus of our first high school diploma program cohort in Kakuma Camp in Kenya. Um, and she is also the founder of Girl Power, an initiative which aims to educate young people about sexual reproductive health, um, menstrual hygiene management um, in order to alleviate period poverty. Um, and to date, Girl Power Initiative has reached over a thousand young girls in Kakuma Camp. She'll be telling you more about that um, in a bit. So the way that this session will work is that I am going to ask Sudi and Majd questions about their, their educational experiences um, and their time with Amala. Um, and then we're going to turn the tables and they're going to ask me a few questions. And then we're going um, to have time for audience questions at the end. 
Um, if you do have questions during the session, um, please just drop them in the chat box and we will do our very best to, um, to, to respond to them later on. Amazing. So, study and matched. Um, I'd really like you to think back in time. <laughs> I'd like you to think about the time before before you were you were enrolled in the Amala High School diploma. Um, could you tell us a bit more about your education before Amala? Um, what were some of the challenges that you were facing, um, and what led you to choose the Amala High School diploma? Um, and matched, perhaps if you'd like to go first and then sure. study. Sure. Um, uh, thank you, Holly. This is a very interesting uh, concept. So um, I fled my home country when I was at the age of fifteen, and um, when I was and and then then I was super nerdy. You know, I was like I almost skipped uh, uh, the third uh, grade. Uh, I skipped already two grades, which meant I was almost a high schooler. Okay. However, when I left my country, I didn't have time like to stop by and get my educational documents and you know think about this because it was uh, the war was going on and everything was going in the country, so it was a bit um, in a rush for us, you know. So what happened is, is that when we arrived to uh, to the place where we we, we sought refuge, um, we didn't have really what we. Uh, what we can do to continue education, to continue our education and um, the papers that we needed. So um, I kept looking for different possibilities to continue my education, but none of them were suitable for me. Um, and I remember my visit to the Ministry of Education uh, in Jordan to ask them about me continuing high school directly. And um, because I had no documents and because I couldn't have a way to get them back, I had to um, uh, just to redo uh, my whole studies from the sixth grade, which is really uh, not feasible for anyone. So um, that's why I continued to work on working and uh, I, I just let my dream of continuing my studies aside. Uh, amazing. Yes, we seem to have an issue with that in this session. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Maj. Could you just say a few words about why why you chose Amala when you found out about it? Um, actually, I found out about Amala when I was uh, studying for one of their uh, short courses, uh, peace building. And uh, one year later, I think two years later, the program started, and I was waiting patiently. I mean, um, the flexibility, the diversity, the uh, the amazing. Uh, um, a uh, new system of education was very compelling, you know, uh, especially also the people that I was uh, with, with when I saw pe people around the Malas campus back then was Ahlan. It was amazing. It was fantastic. So um, it got me drawn to, to, uh, to this community. It got me really excited about starting with the Malas and I was waiting. I was waiting patiently for it to start. And when I, when I, I remember I saw that post on Facebook, I was like, yeah, I should apply. <laughs> Thanks so much, Maj. Um, Sudi, yeah, would love to hear from you as well about your your ex your educational experience before Amala and what brought you to it. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you. Welcome to our session. Uh, the thing is that I was always passionate about education since I was young, and that was because my mom was always the one who always focuses us to have education. And uh, I came to Kenya when I was nine years, and uh, I did my primary here. And the thing is that I went to high school, but some of due to some of the challenges, I was supposed to drop out. And uh, my mom was getting very sick at that time, so I was helping her at home. And uh, I was like, I just dropped out of school. And uh, after two years, I was very like, I still have the hope of going back to school school but I couldn't find the way to go back because I was in the Kenyan high school system I was left behind I couldn't start from from one again and uh, the, that what, what uh, the thing that happened that I came across Amala was I was one of the graduation that was hosted by uh, an, a, a partner of Amala Urish initiative and uh, the course that uh, participants were graduating from was this building and uh, I, one of my friends invited me to attend his graduation on that day. And uh, it happens that I, uh, I met Mr. Mohamed Hure, former education officer of UNHCR. 
and uh, we talk and he asked me if I have finished high school and everything and I told him I didn't because I dropped out because of, because of some challenges and uh, he told me that there is a program that is coming. That time Amala was used to call the Sky School. So he said there is a high school diploma Sky School is bringing. And uh, he, told, he, he didn't tell me more about it. And he, he just said that is a good opportunity for you to grab it. So just uh, focus and uh, when you see the advert, just apply it. And I was impatiently waiting it. The time that uh, in 2021 Amala High School diploma advert come, I really applied it. I think I was the first one who applied. And uh, thankfully, I was given the chance to attend Amala High School diploma. And I graduated. Thanks so much, Sadi. And yeah, it's really interesting to hear about, you know, some of the similarities in, in the challenges that you were facing, despite being in, in quite different geographical locations, right? So, you know, that challenge of, you know, having done some of your secondary education, but dropping out and, and other things becoming priority, whether that's family or work. And, and I think that that's such a kind of common story of what we hear from, from youth who have, have had to drop out of education is how to, how to get back in, right? Um, and uh, I also, yeah, I can imagine you both waiting patiently as well <laughs> for the for the applications to open. So um, thank you for sharing that story with us. Um, so we've already said a little bit about the high school diploma, but we would love to give you a, a fuller introduction to, to what it's all about, how it works. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can get to know it better. Um, and so I think what we're going to do now is Maj is going to provide um, an overview of the program and how it works. So Maj, if you want to, uh, to take it away. Sure. sure. Um, I'll be sharing my screen. So um... Amala is truly an exceptional learning experience for the students. I mean, and, and for everyone, because it's not only academic, you know, uh, students there, um, it helps them um, so resolve inner conflicts. So it's also spiritual and it's also um, hands-on life experience. I have some slides that I would like to share with you uh, that explain more about Amala. So at Amala, the curriculum consists of five semesters. Each semester, uh, contains one different area, and each area has uh, two courses. Uh, the semester is 10 weeks long, and at the end of uh, the five semesters, you get to work on your own personal interest project. Uh, if you just take a look at the diverse structure of these classes, yeah, you, will take, uh, you will take math for change, for example, um, and you will take economy, uh, which is something that is... Uh, economic for positive change that's amazing so um this is my favorite part about the the courses that they're, they're diverse they're new they the concept is designed to help the student advance uh <clears throat> but you also will learn how to uh also build peace you know and living uh peacefully within with yourself and this would be uh something that would make you more productive uh towards your society uh, also, the fun part about uh, your learning or our learning at Amala uh, in general is that we get to document each experience uh, uh, we go through and not just some boring typical homework, you know. Uh, let me show you how. So <clears throat> each student has to complete their uh, foundation competencies in order to graduate. And there are almost uh, 47 uh, competencies uh, 21 of them uh, foundational and 26 are advanced. So um, let me give you an example of our framework uh, on how the framework really works. So if you, if you just pay, uh, pay attention here to each one of these, um, uh, sorry, to each one of these uh, credit, this is what we call them, uh, you can learn that it talks about something that is different. So what happens at Amala, at Amala is that you learn about the topic in general. So you learn about uh, social entrepreneurship, which is a 10 weeks course. And it's amazing. It's one of my favorites. And you get to learn a lot about the startups, the environment, about the uh, ecosystem of the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the uh, world. And then you get to learn about new topics and uh, uh, new vocabulary. And then you get to understand that uh, you, you can have you, you can learn the skill, you can sculpt the skill within yourself on how to identify, for example, a real world issue. 
So what happens with the mala is that after you learn, after you, you start absorbing this uh, information, you start to self-reflect on this information yourself. And then you automatically develop as a person. Okay. And when you develop as a person, you start taking action. And when you take action, you can document your action uh, to submit it to uh, to your facilitators, and then uh, they will take they will take it on from there. Where they give you either feedback on your action, they tell you, for example, uh, you can also do one two three. It's even better if doing one two three to help your action, uh, and your action can be to yourself as well, not only to your community, but it is rather to be done to your community, and then or or you get a credit, and when you do get a credit you will have 46 left. Um, so again, uh, Amala is not only academic journey. It is much more than that. Our PIP says it, says it all. The personal interest project you get to work on at the end of the course where you accumulate all of the knowledge that you have learned already from the course and uh, invest all of your knowledge towards your PIP success. Uh, as Paulie mentioned earlier, that uh, my EIP was uh, Scoloscope. Um, I kept on persisting on working on Scoloscope even after uh, I finished the Mala. And uh, 2022 Scoloscope was uh, start of the year uh, in Jordan. And it also won many competitions uh, as first place uh, uh, in, many, um, in many awesome forms that are for the entrepreneurs uh, in my community in Jordan. So uh, the PIP is generally where you start a project that you focus on an issue that you would like to resolve. And um, you can identify it, uh, um, find a way to, res to resolve it, and then work on it with by yourself or with your uh, team members. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Thank you so much, Maj. Um for that really amazing explanation of the program. We should mention Maj has not only been a student, but was also for some time a facilitator of, of, our, of the program in, in Jordan before he left uh, for Canada. Um, and so uh, this is adapted from the presentation that he's given to the students. So brilliant explanation. Um, I'd love to delve in a bit more into the, the personal interest project, which Madge ended on. Um, and as Madge said, like this is an opportunity for students to, to further develop areas of passion and interest. Um, and sometimes that will be a specific project. Um, I would love to hear from you, Sidi, about your experience of having that space and time to do the personal interest project. Um, Cause I know that girl power uh, came about um, at the same time and that you developed it as part of the personal interest project. Um, so could you tell us more about um, how you came to start Girl Power um, and how the personal interest project helped you to develop it? Uh, thank you, Polly, for the opportunity. And uh, I can say Amala was the way that allowed me to see myself and also getting out of my comfort zone and see what I'm capable of doing. And uh, when it's come to the yeah, DPI Galbawa initiative, I start, it was a part of my PIP. And uh, the reason, first, I, I was having a different project for the program, for the course, but it happens that there was a small experience that I have faced that I would like to share here that forced me to start the DPI initiative or the project. And the thing was, uh, the, the last days of our school, I was visiting one of the primary schools in Kathmandu. It's called Unity Primary. And uh, it happened that I saw, a, uh, I, I went to the rest washroom and I saw a small girl crying behind the toilet. And I was wondering what happened to her. And I, I came to her and I was like, what happened? And uh, she, at that time, she got her period and she didn't know what was happening to her. She was terrified and uh, she thought she was dying actually. And uh, I go to her, I, I talk to her and I explain everything. And uh, I help her wash everything and I give her some some money to go home. And uh, I usually help her with some budget. And at that time, I was having a different project for Bebe, which I already submitted, but I came back to Holly and I was like, I want to change this one because that is for my passion, but this project will help a lot 
a lot of girls in schools and uh, it's something that I saw it's a gap that needed to be filled and I was like if Amala has given you that opportunity and have opened up your mind and I wasn't like I never thought I will be able to manage a project I never th thought I would be able to start a program in Kakma refugee camp and help 1,000 girls. But thanks to Amala, I was able to start and I changed the project to Galba Initiative, which we, which, 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 was, which is designed for education, sexual productive health on the school going girls. And also we, we usually provide to them a reusable sanitary towels, which will help them. Because we, after we, after we did a survey, we found that five to six days girls miss schools, which uh, lead them to drop out of schools because, because of their, uh, their administration and also not having access to reusable sanitary towels. And uh, after I, I started the program, I graduated with Amala with the Girl Power Initiative Project, but uh, after I saw it has the impact in communities, I decided to make it a community-based organization that will be able not only focuses on school going guys, but also to 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 reach out to also to drop out uh, school drop out and be able to get them back to schools and help them with education. Because I came to realize that education is the key to life. Because if you don't have education, you will never reach anywhere. Thanks so much, Sudi. And I just I think Girl Power is such an amazing example of, you know, you, um, you know, having that access to education. Right. Um, and being able to support other girls to do so. And, you know, people talk a lot about ripple effects and ripple effects of education um, on others. And, you know, this is absolutely showing how that happens. And what's so impressive is that for both of you, for both Scholarscope um, and for Girl Power, you were working on this during the program. So I think a lot of in a lot of kind of high school situations, um, the idea is, oh, maybe, you know, we'll do some projects, but then we'll do stuff after we finish school. Whereas I think in Amala, we're always in that time and space that we want to give to progressing that act, taking action during the, the, the learning program is, is quite unique. Um, so thank you so much for talking about that. I'm going to ask you a, another question about um, the future of Girl Power Project in a minute. Um, so now I really we've heard a bit about kind of your experiences during the program and, and Maj, you've given, given an amazing explanation of what the program is. Um, and I'm kind of wondering now you have both finished the program. So you finished in different times. Um, so Maj, you finished. Uh, uh, I'm very bad at thinking back in time, uh, but I think it was September, October 2021. Um, and Sudi, yes. you, you finished last September. Um, so more recently. But I would love to know a bit more about kind of what you've been doing um, after the diploma and and the kind of opportunities you've been pursuing and, and the challenges you've faced as well. Um, and this is a this is a new program, um, I will say. So we um, you, you as our first alumni are playing an important role with our support in terms of looking at pursuing pathway opportunities um, and um, kind of opening up pathways opportunities. Um, and Madge, you've also been doing a lot of advocacy for Amala, which you're going to tell us about. Um, so, yeah, my first question um, for you, Maj, is, you know, yeah, you were one of the first Amala graduates, <laughs> um, uh, very first, and you used your Amala high school diploma to apply to different universities. Um, could you tell us a bit more about that process um, and the challenges that you came across Um and we know you have now been, uh, you know, you've been studying at Prince Edward University in Canada um, for for the last few months, which is amazing. Um, so there, there's a happy ending to it in your case. But um, yeah, tell us more about that process, uh, the challenges and, 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 and how you made that work. Um, of course. Um, so after graduating from Amala, um, I was very excited uh, about continuing the journey of my education because uh, this is everything I wanted uh, to do to begin with, you know? So, um, I believe that it was possible for me to continue my education. And especially now I have, uh, I have this great, um, uh, educational uh, experience from Amala. At the same time, I was having some awesome pathway advising, uh, as well from Amala. 
So, um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, also the pathway uh, advising that I've received from Amala uh, from the pathway workshops and as well as uh, the uh, uh, student counseling uh, that I have also received, it was very helpful for me uh, to discover what, what is out there. So uh, talking about Skoloscope as well, uh, I used to work with a lot of admissions officers. At the same time, I had a big database of these admissions officers in the English speaking countries where I wanted to continue my education. So uh, once I graduated from Amala, I took my certificate and transcripts and started emailing every single admissions officer and going like, uh, hello, my name is Maj, this is Amala. It follows uh, this transcript. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, curricula for uh, design for refugees. Do you accept this? All right. And I just asked them a very forward questions and many, many admissions officers were like, uh, can we meet with you? Can we talk about this more? And then I meet with them uh, face to face uh, online, of course. And they absolutely go crazy. They go, they love Amala. They go like, this is the future of education. Uh, it's fantastic. Everything about it is great. And most of them accepted Amala. They were like, of course, we can accept Amala into our arts program. But at the same time, uh, some people couldn't, for example, the uh, University of Toronto, I was also uh, um, nominated for the uh, Pearson Scholarship uh, in Toronto by Amala as well. But uh, the University of Toronto had a hard time to accept Amala, but at the same time, um, let's say 70% of the universities and colleges that I have contacted, uh, they were gladly accepting Amala and they were like, yes, of course. Uh, one of them would, uh, is Prince Edward Island, the University of Prince Edward Island. Uh, where I applied for a philosophy and psychology program and I got an accepted within a week, uh, which was for me, it was crazy. I was very happy that I could uh, finally do this. And um, uh, this is how I started uh, my education here. Thanks so much, Majd. I think uh, maybe we need to hire you back at some point as chief chief advocate, chief <laughs> chief higher education advocate of Amala. Um, but really interesting to learn about, you know, yeah, your experiences and the reception of this new program because we recognise there's always, you know, a degree of of risk attached to um, to new programs like this, and that's why you know we've been starting with a small number of students to to begin with. Um, and as Maj mentioned, um, we also at Amala are providing providing um, pathways support during the program um, to help um, students to kind of develop that what do you want to do in the future piece <laughs> uh, and um, and to help them to support them to apply to opportunities. Um, so very much a, a work in, in progress, um, but some really um, exciting, you know, some really exciting progress we've seen there in terms of um, alumni like Madge being being admitted to higher education programs, but also pursuing entrepreneurship and and work opportunities. Um, so, Madge, uh, sorry, Sudi. Now, I would love to hear from you. So, you graduated from the um, the diploma program just in September, so it's still quite recent. <laughs> um, um, what is the impact that you feel the program has had on you, um, and what are you currently working on that's that's a that's a leading question because i know you're working on girl power so can you tell us more about um yeah the impact and 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 what you're doing with girl power and what else you're planning as well uh actually amala the program has a great impact in my life because i can say it has made me an open-minded because if it wasn't the program i couldn't have been with you here today and uh, it is a it's a life changing uh, chance because and uh, the thing that uh, after graduating from Amala High School diploma, so the thing is that uh, after I graduated from Amala High School diploma, I saw that I since I wasn't admitted to any university, and I did try to apply for universities, but I wasn't expected and accepted. So I saw that I have the time and uh, I have the knowledge that why don't I not let this be a project, but also be a bigger uh, community-based organization that's going to help a lot of girls and uh, youth in Kakuma. And uh, after I graduated, I I started uh, running my project and uh, I have started also the process of registration as a community-based organization. And uh, I just didn't want it to just be only for the girls. And we also have a we have a lot of plans. We have some other projects that we wanted to add to it. And uh, mostly we wanted, uh, since most of our communities are lacking this, we wanted to have a 
one of the programs of Amala, we, are, we wanted to run one of those courses in this building since uh, it is good to start capacity building in primary schools and they have that idea and to be able to open their mind. Thanks so much. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Thank you so much. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Sudi. So, yeah, kind of you were looking at these opportunities for, for higher education at the moment, um, recognizing that there are some challenges there. Um, but regardless of that, you have been able to continue um, continue to develop girl power. Right. And making it into a into a, a nonprofit organization within the camp, which is really impressive. Um, could you tell us, Sudi, longer term, just to like a bit more about like what are your what are your aims for the future? Where I don't know if it's possible to say where do you want to be in five years? <laughs> um, what are what are some of that? What's some of your aspirations there in terms of what you want to be, where you want to be, and what you want to be doing? Uh, thank you. I really want to. Uh, the thing that uh, now that I want uh, DBI to be somewhere to be able that. If I step back, there are those who are helping and to be able to grow to be uh, an organization that is helping. And I also want that uh, the five years to come, I want to start again applying for, for colleges and to be able to do my degree uh, on journalism and uh, photojournalism especially. So in five years, I see I want to be able to graduate. Be, to be a graduate of a degree and also to see a GBI to reach uh, not only in Kakuma but also be an international organization that is helping a lot of youth and refugees and to be able to give those uh, who are in need education access that can be able to change their lives. And I will be a big fan of like, I will mostly advocate for Amala. Sounds like we need to open up two job opportunity roles there then. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sadi. Yeah. I'm really excited for you. I know there are challenges and I know I know how challenging it can be in, in the camp, but um, it's amazing to hear that determination in your voice as you speak about um, what where you want to be. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so now we're gonna um, we're gonna turn the tables a little bit, and uh, Majd and Sudi are each gonna ask me uh, a question <laughs> uh, relating to Amala um, and kind of what our plans are for the future, basically. Um, so, Sudi, do you, would you like to would you like to go first? And actually, in the meantime, yeah. please start. Yeah, I've seen a few questions in the chat. Please, please add to that. And we'll have time for, for your questions after this. So, yeah, Sidi, go ahead. Ask me, ask me a question. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, the question I wanted to ask uh, in Amala representative is that what is the future of Amala and how are you planning to grow the high school diploma? across the world <laughs> it's a really big question <laughs> um so i yeah, think i want amala to, reach to so many youth as possible yeah yeah and and so do we so do we and i think you know because this has been a, a new program um we have wanted to start with you know relatively small small numbers of students um on our um on on, on the programs in both Jordan and Kenya it's been important for us to to do it in both in in several different locations um to test the viability to see you know what are the differences in in, in both locations um and we but i think our plan for f the future is for you know is to be able to fill um, a part of this huge, huge need um, that we see around um, lack of access, lack of choices in terms of youth being able to finish their, their secondary education. Um, and so um, part of that will be expanding, you know, where possible our own programs to date. We've had we have teams who are, I think, on this call um, in Jordan and in Kenya who have been um, delivering the Amala High School Diploma Program. Um, so we want to continue that. Um, but we also see a role in in terms of um, working with partners. Um, so that could be uh, small community based organizations or medium sized organizations, larger organizations. Um, 
and enabling them to, well, basically authorizing um, organize, other organizations to be able to um, run the diploma program. Uh, we have yet to develop that process. Um, we're working a lot with partner organizations to run our change maker courses to, to quite a great deal of success. Um, for the diploma program, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, there are more, um, there are kind of more decisions that we need to make there. But our aspiration is to be able to work through Amala operated models and partner operated models to grow the program in in the in different locations um so both jordan kenya but also in other places because we know that that, that there is a need for this that is that is global really um so i'm not able to give i'm able to give an answer in terms of we have an aspiration to grow both through um through amala models and partnership models um to maximize access and impact uh so yeah it's it's going to be exciting majd would you uh yeah. Yes. Would you like to? Of course. So um, this, this is very, very nice. nice. Um, uh, now I understand that Amala is going through accreditation process. And um, everybody had this question when I graduated and uh, with the new cohorts that I'm seeing is that is Amala accredited? Is Amala accredited? Now we have proven that Amala is working out. Um, what are the plans for completing this uh, accreditation process and, uh, and what will further recognition uh, in the countries in the country look, look like? Very big and relevant questions. And I think this is also the, you know, the number one question that we get when we talk about the Amala High School Diploma. Is it accredited? Um, because we have we built the program from from scratch, uh, we couldn't get it accredited Probably. until we were actually running. The program um and so um we have been for the last two and a half years nearly um undertaking this accreditation process with um with cis council of international schools and NASC, um a new england association of schools and colleges uh our team uh some of whom are here today are working really really hard on this kind of final stage of the process um for us accreditation looks at the the whole institution so yes there is teaching and learning is very important as our premises uh it provision governance um leadership so it's a very um comprehensive process um we are um we are we are we're going to be ending the process at the end of this year. So in in November and um, December, we'll receive a visit from from the accredit to the accreditors, um, and we hope therefore accreditation to be in place um, kind of early next year if all goes to plan. Um, and I think really you know the process has been incredibly valuable for us both in terms of you know we've always wanted to have an accredited program, um, but it's also been of huge value in kind of discovering okay what does quality what does quality need to look like um so our team have been going through this kind of learning uh, improvement process which has been fantastic and actually invaluable as we start to think about okay what does it now look like to grow this what do we need to have in place um but i think um you know the benefits of just having that third party quality assurance uh you know for, for our for our team are huge but also in terms of um higher education access as well so um a lot of in, more institutions will be able to recognize the amala high school diploma um and you know particularly when we look at some of the kind of um us um institutions that are offering online programs for higher education for refugees um and also uh, other kind of in-person opportunities as well um, in both kind of US, Canada, that kind of spectrum, um, we see the incredible value of accreditation. Um, and then I also think, um, you know, this is the beginning of a journey of recognition for, for the Amala High School Diploma. Um, so it, the accreditation does not mean that it will automatically be recognized everywhere around the world. Uh, we would love that, but unfortunately that isn't the case, but it will... Um, it will help us to look at, OK, recognition in country, uh, in Jordan and Kenya and other places will help to set the stage for potentially working on government recognition um, in those places to open up even more opportunities. So it's an amazing starting point, both um, yeah, for that recognition journey um, and for um, for the opportunities for our alumni like like you, making it easier to, to be able to access opportunities. Uh, that's I a have... very... <laughs> I have so, no doubt. I have no doubt. Uh, like Amala, ever since Amala started, it's been going uh, on a steady uh, upward line, you know, and uh, it's amazing. Every every milestone you guys reach or we reach, if I may say, 
it's just amazing. And uh, we know that there is more to come. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Maj and Sidi, for your questions. Um, and I'm so happy that we have time for audience questions as well. Um, I am just reading a few on the chat right now. Uh, there's there's one question that was sent to me um, by uh, Lizzie, who is actually our um, accreditation consultant who is helping us through the, the process. Lizzie, you sent this to me privately, but I would like to ask, ask Maj uh, publicly um, that with hindsight, so looking back, um, you know, when you were applying to universities um, with the Amala High School Diploma, is there anything that you would have done differently now that you're, yeah, now that you're in the position that you're in? Is there anything you can tell us there about what you would do differently? Um, actually, the only thing that I would have done differently is that uh, the universities who did not accredit Amala, I would have just had a, a bit more of a fight with them, you know, because uh, many other other did. And I have gotten uh, three letters of acceptances from different universities. And it's what happened with the uh, Cape Breton University in Nova Scotia here in Canada, where they said, no, we cannot accept this uh, high school. And then and I showed them the acceptance from Prince Edward Island. They were like, oh, OK, Prince Edward Island gave you an acceptance. Then, uh, OK, we, we accept this. And um, this is uh, probably, um, I should have maybe talked about that there are some, uh, to everyone who uh, did not accredit Amala, I should have just told them that most of the universities and colleges who are modern <laughs> uh, uh, have accepted Amala and have thought about, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, taking students into admissions. And to be honest, um, um, I have thought this through and I've gotten so much help from uh, Amala staff uh, towards uh, advocating uh, to Amala uh, to different admissions officers. So there was nothing um, wrong with the approaches that we have taken to uh, talk to admissions officers. But at the same time, um, we could we could have waited um, out and then explained it better to uh, uh, to the admissions officers, even though if um, someone who has a better impact at Amala could have, like for, like you, Polly, for example, could have reached those uh, admissions officers as well uh, in person. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the university, uh, the university's uh, staff, you know, the higher staff, maybe they would have uh, tried to understand and advocate with us mm. Uh, mm. towards Amala. So that's it. That's my thoughts about it. Mm. It's a really important, yeah, it's a really important point, Maj, that also, you know, now at the beginning of the program, we had no evidence of of uh, universities accepting Amala graduates because it was new, right? And now you we're able to show that, you know, yes, Prince Edward Island, for example, have admitted you and there are other students as well. So how can we, we can, we can now do work around that kind of advocacy and showing who has, you know, who has accepted and building that sense of trust in other organizations that are maybe, you know, more cautious or, um, yeah, have maybe not heard of it as well. Um, so I think this is a key priority for us as we yeah have moved to the next stages um True. thanks for that um we have a a lovely question on the chat um about from leanne which is do you need volunteers who have experience in u.s college counseling to assist graduates to pursue higher education i would say yes please connect with us after this session we have been working with a number of um uh, college counsellors from uh, from different high schools around the world who um, helped um, our first cohorts of, of alumni um, around pathways opportunities. But um, we're looking at you know what more we can do there as we have more graduates. So definitely interested in connecting on that. Um, I also see a question from Nikki, uh, which is. Do you provide services to support and promote mental uh, well-being as part of Amala students' experience? Um, so, Sudi so, so Maj, would would either of you like to answer this and speak a bit about could, the approach? Could you repeat here? the question? Yeah. So, do we provide services to, to support and promote well-being as part of the students' Amala experience? It's all about the well-being, to be honest. Uh, at least from the way I perceive it and from the way that many of my classmates did perceive it. Uh, well-being is mentioned uh, on daily basis uh, at Amala, which is something that actually I've, I have learned the word well-being 
from Amala, you know? Um, do we, we do promote well-being and all of our courses, all of our uh, structure uh, is pointed, kind of pointed that way, you know? It's not only about uh, education and how you learn uh, and what you're learning. It's also about you learning it in a, um, in a mindset that um, makes you uh, more uh, uh, open and makes you more accepting towards yourself, you know? And uh, of course we do uh, promote well-being within our classes uh, uh, in Amala. And uh, it's, it's just a great experience. I feel like Amala shouldn't be just a high school for, that is designed for refugee. I feel Amala should be necessary uh, the high school uh, diploma, uh, diploma program should be necessary for everyone to uh, try and take a chance uh, on attending, you know? Mm. Thank, thanks, Maj. Does it, Sudhi, is there anything you'd like to add here about the well-being from a Kakuma student alum perspective? Yeah, uh, actually, the way you might just say that uh, my education is all based on well-being because like... Uh, we mo this, the, the situation we are living and the, and the place we are living in, the facilitators really focus on this and uh, they're really there to help us with advices and also how to be able to manage our stress. If, if you have something that is really disturbing, you like the, the facilitators who are friendly, you know, they are there, like they are brothers, they are counselors, they are there each, uh, every step to, to be able to help uh, this Amala students to overcome every challenge they face through the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sidi. And I think, you know, we see that, you know, the the well-being piece cannot be underestimated. And, and our program does take place, the majority of it does take place in person, in, in classrooms, in physical classrooms. Um, and a, there's a lot of dialogue about online learning for refugees, which is is very valid. But we also see that, you know, and Maj, you might be able to attest to this from the Jordan experience as well, like that students can often, when they come to us, they can often feel quite isolated, quite alone. Um, and so creating that community um, of community of learners is more just than just about learning. It's about creating a network that is um, that is focused on similar values and uh, doing um, similar things and supporting each other. Um, so it's absolutely core to the to the Amala effort, really. Um, thank you for that question. Really good question. Um, I am just looking at any other questions. Uh, I think we have one about um, what are the plans of Amala in terms of helping diploma graduates in connecting them to degree scholarships or other universities, either online or on campus? Another great question. Um, uh, uh, Maj, would you like to say anything here? I'm also sure. happy to, yeah. Oh, sure. But I, I'm, I'm not being able to find the questions when you're, uh, uh, when you're it's, participating. It's from, from, no, from Tom. Can you just give it back to me again? Yeah. So what are the plans of Amala in terms of helping diploma graduates connect to degree scholarships or other universities, either online or on campus? Sure. So, um, our pathway advising uh, at Amala was uh, very helpful for us. You know, uh, I connected to um, a volunteer uh, whose name was Corey uh, that helped me uh, connect with various scholarships that are uh, available. And she helped me advocate for Amala as well. So um, what I think here uh, uh, is that the pathway advising programs uh, where we're creating a community from scratch and then we are maintaining it and helping us other students to um, understand the opportunities out there. Uh, we have various scholarships that uh, reach out to us uh, through Amala uh, from universities uh, like the one in the Mauritius. Do you remember it, uh, Polly? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was a very awesome um, scholarship that we have received invitation to apply to, uh, which is, was a fully funded scholarship and they certainly accepted them as uh, uh, high school. And um, I think I think that um, with time, with time, Amala will be uh, well known for other universities and other uh, higher education uh, opportunities where they, the, the institutions themselves will reach out to Amala to get, um, uh, you know, to, to invite students to apply 
uh, for their uh, programs. But at the same, but at this time, me like this time, all what we were doing is uh, uh, pathway advising, trying to get uh, educational counselors. Now we today we had like almost uh, three or four people trying to, um, you know, uh, volunteer with Amala to uh, advocate for Amala to help students connect with the uh, educational institutions uh, for the higher education. Mm. And I think I can see that Muhammad Abdukadir just wrote on the on the chat, like, you know, Kakuma has limited student scholarships, right? And so I think we need to acknowledge that there are significant challenges here around, there are significant challenges around the secondary education piece. There are significant challenges around the higher education piece as well. Um, and so, you know, around students, you know, costs mainly, uh, the ability to finance higher education. Um, and Amala can't uh, necessarily remove all of those barriers, but there are things that we can do also in terms of, you know, in conversations with um, tertiary education providers, some of them say, listen, we don't have enough qualified secondary graduates to 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 expand our program in the camp, right? Um, and so, you know, with Amala, what we've been trying to do is to is to increase that number of students that will be qualified to go onto those programs. So proving that there is, you know, there are more people who can go onto those programs is really important. Um, and finding those connections with them, and you know, and basically raising awareness of the the Amala High School Diploma Program. Um, okay. We have time for one final, uh, just one final question, then we're going to wrap up. And I just want to address this to Sudi, which is, um, <laughs> um, so the question is around English support. Um, and so whether we, you know, maybe I'll change it a little bit to say, um, you know, what, what, how did you see, was there an aspect of improving your English on the program? And, and to what extent is that helping you apply to other opportunities? Um, English is the uh, is very essential for uh, learning at Amala. At the same time, the language that is used within the curriculum is not is not that very hard. So the facilitators have created a way where then when they communicate with the students, they are already enhancing their uh, English language uh, during uh, throughout the course. At the same time, uh, Amala have tried um, right, Polly. You have mm -hmm. tried. Um, uh, an English prerequisite course uh, uh, that I, I'm i not sure how it went, but I think it went well for students who tried to learn. And then eight of the students who uh, tried to, who took this course were able to enroll in Amala, which was amazing. Um, uh, for me, what I want, what I want to see in the future, I want to see uh, courses, uh, the, the short courses happening uh, for prerequisites for Amala, uh, where students, uh, are very interested to take the diploma that they are going and learning the other language, English, so that they can just enroll and uh, keep going on. Thanks, Maj. Yeah, I would just add students, you know, during the diploma, they are developing uh, the language of study is English at the moment. We'd actually like to expand the languages of study in the future. But um, there is um, a tension between, uh, yeah, most a lot of higher education opportunities being in English. Um, and so um, we are seeking to develop that throughout the program and students can um, also take the Duolingo English test um, uh, at the end of the program as well. So that's beneficial in showing that evidence. So do your back. And it's right at <laughs> right at the end of the session. So I'm sorry you dropped off. Um, I would really like to, we're at the 130 mark now in the UK. So I would like to close by first of all saying a huge thank you to Maj and Sudi um for for this. <laughs> um for for speaking about the program um and for you know all the preparation you've done for this session i think we've learned so much for you just in terms of it's 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 one thing to be able to describe the program but it's another thing to be able to have you here to explain to explain the impact really um so thank you for doing that and thank you to everyone for for attending um, we hope the session has been interesting for you and useful um would love to connect i'll write my email in the in the chat box with it with anyone who wants to connect uh, about anything uh, be it recognition partnerships just wanting to know more etc um so thank you um lorraine uh shall i 
I'll hand back over to you just to close. Yeah, just, yeah. so thank you, Polly. Thank you, Amala. This is a fantastic program. Um, this session is recorded and it will be available on our, on our YouTube channels. You mentioned Duolingo. We've got another session in, maybe next week about Duolingo and the English test for refugees. So, and there's and coming up in half an hour, there's a session on women in education. So please join us for the rest of the Migration Summit. Thank you and have a really wonderful day. Bye, everyone.